Saturdays were the best day to stand on the dock and watch boats. There were tugboats, and motorboats, and dachshunds, and dachshunds. Hey, it's Hundley. Hundley loved everything about sailing. How the sails sounded when they caught the wind. How the doorman used the wind in the sails to make the boat go faster. And how there was all that water between their boat and the nearest sloppy monkey. Hey, I never knew you guys sailed. Sure. Hunley likes sailing so much, I put a boat in his dish. <laughs> now drinking water reminds him of sailing, which makes him happy. If you want to see some great sailing ships, watch Pirates of the Wybicus tonight. Any show about sailing ships sounded good to Hunley. It's so good, the first time I saw it, I wished I was a pirate. Since this was a sailboat, George wanted to be the wind and make it go. Let's go, George. Natural Geometric Exploring presents Pirates of the Wybicus. Wow. How'd you like to sail a ship like that, Hundley? <laughs> Now there was a ship that couldn't be sunk by monkey breath. The SS Wybicus was attacked by the bold pirate Black Hat Besame. Ah. Pirate vessel off the port bow. All hands to your stations. Haul win, coxswain. Oh. Oh. Those ships were so dignified and neat. Wouldn't it be great to be an old time captain? Oh. Oh. <laughs> the neatest ship to ever set sail was the SS Dignified. Its commander was world-renowned, Captain Hundley. <laughs> no other captain was as smart, as orderly, or had as wet a nose. All's clear, Captain Hundley, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You know how much your approval means to me, sir. <laughs> Captain Hundley's crew was always orderly and efficient. <laughs> no one knew how to ride the breezes like Captain Hundley, the greatest sailor in the history of wind. But all was not smooth sailing. A new crewman came aboard during a stop in the dry Tortugas. New first mate George was a sloppy monkey with a jelly sandwich. But Captain Hundley didn't worry. He put that monkey in the brig and kept his ship dignified. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> 
yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, George, your turn. You've got to hit the eight now. Do it and you set a record. You've never made it past seven in hopscotch before. Huh? Oh, oh George, when you reach seven, you just have bad luck. <laughs> George was sure that's what he had. <laughs> he had bad luck with pouring, <laughs> and bathtub boating, too. George started to wonder if this bad luck would ever end. <laughs> Apparently, not anytime soon. Come on, George. Let's get home before we get soaked. Um, let's get you a hat so you don't get too <laughs> wet. Eh? Ooh. Oh, you like this one? <laughs> hey, George, Charky found her ball. Let's get home before it starts again. Hey, that's pretty lucky. You want to use it in the toy store? <laughs> Congratulations! You're Dulson's one millionth customer. You've just won a shopping spree. Uh-huh. And you can keep all the toys you can grab. In ten seconds. Starting now. <laughs> ten. <laughs> Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ah! Oh, good choice. She's a beauty. Super fast, even in bubble bath. And tell you what, you can keep all the other toys you grabbed. Oh, what good luck! The rain stopped, Charky found her ball, you found a coin, then you won all of this. Uh -huh. The man with the yellow hat was right. George's bad luck had become good luck, and it started uh -huh. when he put his new hat on. Uh -huh. I call this extreme hopscotch. You think he can handle it? Uh -huh. Yeah! You can go first. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen? George had never counted past twelve. What did thirteen look like? Of course, one comes before two, and two comes before three. played his Four, best game ever. Three, two, one! <laughs> then it came time to throw number eight. Uh-oh, here's where his bad luck kicks in. Shh, give him a chance. If there was ever a time George needed his lucky cap, it was now.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now it's time to pick the winner of our contest. The winner is sheet B3. George, you're in B3. You won. <laughs> Here's the winner. Uh, George won. Ha-ha. <laughs> our winner is that young man. He's a monkey. Well, that young monkey's been picked to be the conductor at our next children's concert in the park. <laughs> <laughs> Come see me after the concert. Ah, welcome, welcome. George, you know what the conductor does, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe I can explain it to you so you can do it without falling down. <laughs> There's a lot of counting in music, such as counting the tempo, the speed of the music. The conductor helps keep the tempo of the music with a little stick called a baton. <laughs> I can count the tempo like this. One, two, three. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is called four, four time. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Good. There are other tempos too. This is called three, four time. One, two, three, one, two, three. Mm, 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 mm. You see, George, now let's try it together. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Got it? At harvest time, Farmer Rankins liked having a few extra hands around to help pick the apples. This year, he also had extra feet. <laughs> it's real nice of you two to help out. Our orchard is small, so getting every apple is important. Well, that's what neighbors are for. <laughs> He's certainly built for apple picking. Oh. Oh. Mm. Can't say the same for your hat. <laughs> I'm gonna join the missus round back. Once you fill that cart, you can unload it in the washing trough. Will do.
Jumpy had found a perfect apple. One more? Okay, put it in. <laughs> Jumpy's perfect apple was in there somewhere. But where? <laughs> Jumpy apparently didn't know that the Rankins needed every apple. <gasps> Easy now, George. That lever releases all of the apples. George thought that was an excellent way to get Jumpy out of the cart. Ah. <laughs> no! <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> Jumpy decided he should hide his perfect apple. Maybe in there. <sighs> well, that's okay. We can gather them up again. <gasps> <gasps> or I can just do it myself. <sighs> what was this? It must have been some kind of monkey playground with all sorts of things to climb on and swing from. But George wasn't there to play. He had to get that apple from Jumpy. If only he could find a light switch. Farmer Rankin said he loved his apples, but George was surprised that he made a ride for them. Those buckets must be there to carry the apples high out of the reach of squirrels. Wait, where was Jumpy? George wanted to work, but Gnocchi wanted to have fun. <laughs> Nothing makes a cat happier than winning a tug of war. <sighs> Do you still make discoveries that get you excited? Sadly, no. I've seen everything. Just once, I'd like to see something that really surprised me. All the bones were put together. <sighs> but maybe it mattered which bone went where. <laughs> Gnocchi was happy. It looked like George was setting up a new round of whatever this game was. All right, let's see my skeleton. But, but we just ordered dessert. Uh, dessert? Uh, of oh, course, sorry. of course. This memory of mine. But I'm anxious to know how you've handled my precious bones. <laughs> Being a cat, Gnocchi found it exhausting watching someone else do so much work. George's skeleton didn't look as good as that other one, even though they looked almost the same before. <laughs> if they looked the same, he could figure out where the bones belonged by using the other one as a guide. <laughs> Ha 
George compared every bone and sorted them by size and shape. So before he put them together, he knew exactly what went where. Since George was done sorting the bones, Gnocchi figured she'd mix them up so he could play again. <laughs> so, am I forgetting anything? Or is it now time to see how you've taken care of my baby? <sighs> it's time. Oh, I'm nervous. You have nothing to be nervous about whatsoever. George had one side of the skeleton finished. When he noticed... <laughs> both sides looked the same, except opposite. He could finish by matching the remaining bones to what he'd already done. Gnocchi wished this bone game would end, so they could play something cats were good at. I'll admit I'm worried. No one else but I has ever handled those bones before today. Only our best people have been involved. <laughs> oh! Oh, boy. Your best people are a monkey and a cat? George! <laughs> This isn't the skull we put on it. It seems George was switching them. I don't know why. I do. The monkey's right. The, the monkey's, monkey's right? <laughs> that old skull never looked right. I think George has correctly matched the cranial structure. Huh? Now I wish I'd loaned this out years ago. I want George to check all my future work. <laughs> and that went on record as the first scientific discovery made by a monkey. Oh! <laughs> Assisted by a cat from an Italian restaurant. Yeah.